All right. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. We are live. Uh, thank you for everybody who's tuning in, will be tuning in, those who are present. Uh, grateful to have you all here. And uh, we're starting something new today. Uh, this is the first, I, I guess, the first Tuesday of March. We came out of last month being Black History. Uh, we did, um, we were talking about the purpose of pain. We started out talking about why we have resolutions uh, in the beginning of the year. From resolutions, we talked about receiving wisdom. The whole purpose of having resolutions and what we're trying to do is to, to get wisdom. After getting wisdom, we talked about um, pain and trying to avoid it and God's purpose for it. Now, since we were talking about purpose, uh, we had a conversation this week as, as uh, my family was doing the uh, devotions that we do. The, the conversation came up in regards to living a successful life or, more importantly, how do we define success? So, uh, that brought up a whole lot of different conversations, scriptures, and everything else. So I, I want to take some time. Uh, one of the reasons why we have resolutions is because we want to improve something in our lives. Mm -hmm. We want to be better. And uh, one of the things that I, I, I want to ask you all, and since this is Bible study, this is an opportunity for us to talk and talk back to each other. This is not the monologue on Sunday. So I, I need conversation. How do you define success? Anybody? Yeah, because it was really too quiet. Too quiet. <laughs> too long. <laughs> Okay, so uh, success is when you are goal oriented and you are achieving the goals that you have put in place for yourself. What else? Uh, for me, success is that, but also being able to make sure that whatever my family needs, as far as things that I can control or I can help out, I can be able to contribute. I'm able to achieve what I want to with that achievement. I'm able to actually spread that love and actually help other people out. That's my, my definition of success. Sorry about that. All right. So, uh, Minister Akil said his definition of success is uh, it's more family oriented as much as it is individually. So, some people it is what is for me, some people it is what is for us. If you ask a business, the business is not successful if only one person on the job is successful. Mm -hmm. For the business, it would be everybody involved. So, uh, anybody else want to add or contribute? Okay. So, let's... If you were to turn that into a theological question, so in the church, in, in your Christian life, what is success? Having a relationship with God. Having a relationship with God. Spreading God's word. Spreading God's word. <laughs> Having faith in the word. Having faith in the word. Being obedient. Being obedient. Now what about on an individual basis? On an in, so, if we have individual goals, let's let's if we're talking about the Christian life, then yes, we are all part of the body of Christ. We right, That's right. we all agree with that. But if you want to determine whether or not you are being successful. In the body. How do you know whether or not you are successful 
in the body in your Christian walk? By knowing that I have pleased God. By knowing if you have pleased or if you are pleasing to God. Yes, ma'am. Things that used to bother me or um, mm -hmm. problems I used to have before, they don't bother me that much. Or I, I can kind of stand against it a lot better than I could before. So spiritual growth, mm -hmm. what what used to would destroy me, now only ails me. Mm -hmm. What used to ail me doesn't bother me. Mm -hmm. So somebody talking about me if, before would make me leave the church. Mm -hmm. Now somebody literally assaults me and I stay in the church. Preacher, oh, no, I, I, I know you have that David anointing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, be careful. I got my dad's <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so, so this, this is where we're going. This was the whole purpose. How do I know? This is a, uh, yeah, this is a screw gun. Uh, it's a drill. How do I know if this is successful or not? If because the screw goes all the way in the wall. Yeah, Please try that. It. It's doing what it's supposed to do. It's doing it's what you set for to do when you squeeze it's it. It's got the power that it needs to do the work that needs to be done. So I bought this for a purpose. Purpose. The purpose yeah. is to be able to uh, to keep me from having to use a manual screwdriver. I can do work much faster with this yeah. than I could with. A, uh, a manual screwdriver. Right. I exhibit a whole lot less energy by using this. I can put in more screws in the wall or whatever because I have this. Now, if I bought this for that purpose and I can't use it, uh, the, the space that I bought it for, uh, this is too wide for it to fit in, then it's no good. But the only way to define whether or not this is purposeful is based on the individual who bought it and what they bought it for. And the use. Yes. So, uh, I don't know, somebody let me know if, if you all can see this TV. Uh, can, can you see the TV in the background? So we bought this TV for a, a couple of purposes. One, for the, the children's church. They can have it, they can watch videos. But what I would also like to do I'm trying to find a way to be able to connect my iPad to this TV. There is a possibility of doing it, but I have to uh, get a cord, a USB that connects to the iPad that will uh, project what I have on here to the TV. So there's an HDMI to a USB or I, uh, an iPad projector, whatever. I have to find the program. If I cannot find that, even though it's doing part of what it's supposed to for the children's church, the initial reason for purchasing it before we were developing the children's church was for the Bible study. Because we were passing out uh, all of the different, you all remember when we were talking about the garment for um, the garment for the priest. And, and, and we passed out because you couldn't see what I was seeing. That led me to, okay, we have a problem. How do we solve the problem? The way that we solved the problem was getting a screen that you all would be able to see exactly what I'm seeing on my iPad. If I'm not able to do that, then part of the reason why we bought it is unproductive. Right? You following me? Okay. So... How do you know if your Christian walk, your Christian life, your life as a Christian, now make sure we understand there is a difference, your Christian life versus your life as a Christian. How do you know if it is successful? Mother Adam said, if I am pleasing to God. That is the absolute truth. But how do you know if you are pleasing to God? 
by lining up with the, what the Word of God says. If I'm reading God's Word and knowing God's Word, I know what the Word teaches me to do and how it expects me, how it teaches me to live, how I'm supposed to carry myself. <coughs> so everything that I, have to, that, that I have to know to know if I'm pleasing God is my answer is right here. But I have to know what this Word says to know that I'm walking in the will of God. Absolutely, yes. But that was very in-depth, but also correct. It was it was an overall correct answer. Faith. Yes, sir. Faith. 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 Yes. And words. Yes. And here's what I'm getting to. The individual, every individual, if I'm part of the body, the only way to know if I am successful is if I am in <laughs> Please don't eat that. Um, the only way you know if you are successful as part of the body is to ask, if you will, the hate. If Jesus Christ is the head of the church, the head of the church body, we are part of his body. The only way to find out if I am successful is if I am talking or in direct communication on a constant basis with God. Because I can't say I asked God yesterday and, and I fulfilled my job yesterday. If I'm the hand and I picked up a bowl on yesterday and that's what God wanted me to do, what about today? So are we in constant communication because the hand can do a whole lot of things. The hand can build, the hand can tear down, the hand can embrace, the hand can, uh, uh, what's the word, chastise. So the hand can do a whole lot of things. I just have to make sure that my hand is doing what I'm telling it to at all times. Now, we all can say realistically, that we are not doing what God tells us to do all the time. Mm -hmm. So, in order to find out and to realize uh, whether or not we are successful, men, you all help me out as as as, as we continue to come in. Uh, if, if if well, we can't add really any more chairs, but we can go up to the front and grab another table and, and set it up. So, uh, you all just kind of be watching. So, we make sure that we have enough. Um, but Pastor, a question. Yes, ma'am. Wouldn't that still line up in getting being in our word, just like we see our physical body, and we see our physical body every day. So if we're in our word, whether it's actually reading our word, listening to our word, following the word, wouldn't that yet give us the uh, word, the instruction, give us the fulfillment of knowing? I know that these things that I'm doing, denying myself, is pleasing God because this is what God requires me to do. There are some times that we don't eat because we're fasting. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So if we're seeking God, you know, let me say communication, prayer, like you just said. If we're praying, you're talking all day long. Sometimes you're doing stuff, you ask the Lord, Lord, work on me. God, fix me. God, help me for this journey. God, make me better. You know what I'm saying? So when, But here's my problem with that. Mm -hmm. The Bible says God has given us everything pertaining mm -hmm. to life and godliness. Mm -hmm. How many of us have, and, and it, it, this doesn't make you a good Christian or not a good Christian. Right. How many of us have read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation? Like all the way through. Yeah, all the way through. Oh. And they, they have Bible plans right, in the year. Right, right, right. And a few years ago, we went through the entire Bible right. uh, for the year. Mm -hmm. uh, I think almost every week we did a new book. We, we kind of talked about uh, who the author was, what the main theme of it was, blah, blah, blah. And the idea was for us to, to literally read through the Bible in that one year. Mm -hmm. But there are Bible plans where you can read the Bible in a year. Mm -hmm. How many of us who have read the Bible from the beginning to the end know exactly what God wants us to do? Or you have read different parts of the Bible, but still you don't know what it is that God wants for you? What what is your uh, what 
I, I don't want to use the word goal. What is your uh, purpose? Thank you. That's the word. What is your purpose? You know, some people still don't know what their purpose is. I mean, we read Jeremiah, and, and we're going to go there. Go, go to Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah. Yep, Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah chapter 1, we're going to read verse 4 and 5, and we can read this from the King James. It's, it's, it's pretty, uh, quote unquote, it's simple enough, uh, even in the King James, to be able to, to read it. What's the scripture? Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 4 and 5. You are, I love when we out, uh, when we out capacity ourselves. Amen. I love it. Give yourselves a, a hand clap of praise. Are we there? Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 4 and 5. It starts off saying, Then the word of the Lord came to me, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou came forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, mm -hmm. and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. So, if, if Jeremiah 4 start, or 1 verse 4 starts with then, you understand that there had to be something before that. So Jeremiah is, is talking to, to God, and, and God is telling him, I want you to do something, and, and whatever else, and he tells uh, God, I'm, I'm too young. And God tells him, before you were formed, before, you know, they said you was a twinkle in your daddy's eyes. God knew who you were. God says from the foundations of the earth, when, when, when God made Adam, he knew you. How about that? So, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000 years ago, when, when Adam was created... God knew every last one of us. He knew your start date. He knows your end date. Everything in between. You all understand what I'm saying? So even though you read this, even though you have read Jeremiah 1, and you know that before you were formed, God knew you, but does that still tell you? How many of you all in here know which part of the body you are in Jerusalem? know my part because it's that part is quote unquote very simple. I'm the head when it comes to New Jerusalem. Now, six years ago, I wasn't. So how many of you all know you can transfer or transform body parts in the body of Christ? Does that make sense? Do you all understand what I'm saying? So how many of you all have more than one personality. <laughs> and I don't mean a personality disorder. I mean you have more than one personality. Yeah. Okay. There are times my, my sister calls me and she say, hey, bro. And I say, hey, sis. She said, I want to talk to my brother, not the pastor. I said, okay, hold on. <laughs> All right, your brother's here. <laughs> and then later on she said, okay, now I need to talk to my pastor. I go, hold on. <laughs> Good evening, dog. <laughs> I, I recognize that what I am to you, I'm different to my wife. What I am to my kids, I'm different to my wife. What I am to, even what I am to my daughters, I'm different than what I am to my son. So there are different personalities. My son would tell me all the time, that seems like you're a little harder on me than you are on them. You're absolutely right. That don't mean I don't love you as much. It means that I have to treat you differently because you are different. So, and, and when it comes to uh, my household, I'm the head of my household. When it comes to the overall Adams family, my father is the, the, mentor, the, the patriarch of the Adams family right now. He is the oldest... Uh, of, of, of KP and on down, and I'm not sure if there's any other uh, any other atoms that are left from the men 
No. No. So uh, Romy, all, all of them are, are gone. So he is the head in the Adams family as far as the patriarch is concerned. So do you all understand now what I'm saying when I'm saying that there are different personalities, there are different parts of the body that I can be even inside of the body. And I can transform. So when the Bible says be not conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, I can transform I can transform into different parts of the body based on what I need it to be. Does that make sense? Now, right. So when we watch the movie Transformers, am I needed to be a truck? Am I needed to be a car? Am I needed to be a motorcycle? Am I needed to be a plane? Whatever I'm needed to be, I can transform into that because God has given us that versatility. Mm -hmm. To be able to transform based on what I needed. So when Paul says, I'm all things to all people, when I'm talking to different groups, I understand who my audience is. Mm -hmm. okay. When I'm talking to a biracial group, I know there are certain things that, that could be triggering points mm -hmm. that I know to stay clear of. I can still get my point across without saying certain things. But depending on where I'm going to, when I go into the jailhouse and I'm teaching or, or, or preaching or, or having conversations with them, there are certain things that I know to stay clear of based on who I'm talking to. You all understand what I'm saying? So in order for me to be successful, success transfers or transforms depending on who I'm talking to. Does that make sense? Now, with that being said, if you have been, if the only way I can find out if I am successful is based on my creator, am I being what the creator has designed me to be? So now when we go back to the idea of purpose, each one of us has been created and designed by God for a particular purpose. Purpose. The only way to know if you are successful is to be in constant communication with God using the word as your base. So I can't say that uh, God created me to be a gigolo. Well, God spoke directly to me. Well, no, because the word says, let every man has his wife, let every wife have her own husband. Uh, that's out of the will of God. Yeah. Well, God said, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I want to be Mormon, I want to be Latter-day Saints, and I want to have multiple wives. That's what, that's what I believe God is saying to me. Well, no, God says one, one woman for every man, one man for every woman. Because they're out of the will of God. That ain't all. David, who was part of God's. Well, yeah, there are people in America with more than one wife. Yes, yes, no. The, the man who was. Y'all pray for the ministerial staff. Um, was, it, was it David Koresh? Is that his name in uh, Texas? Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. And Cody Brown and uh, with the sister wives. Right. Mm -hmm. Y'all gonna watch the, the sister wives? Mm -hmm. They're in America. These are men who have more than one wife. Yeah. And they all live together. Yeah. Sometimes harmonious, sometimes with problems or whatever. But this is what we're up against. That's not God's way. God... God created Adam and he took one rib. I don't know why some of us think we get a whole rack. <laughs> <laughs> we don't even get a half rack. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Somebody said, I don't think he has the mic on today. So I don't know if you're being heard. No, the, the mic is not on. We don't, we don't, uh, because we are in this enclosed space, we're not using the mic. I would like to know. Are they able to hear me? I'm literally trying to speak. It just uh, sounds like you're talking into the camera. That's, I mean, to the phone. 
So okay. They can hear it. It's not as clear as it is. It's, it's not right. We are not using the microphone today. Uh, we are using, thankfully, our children's church where we were before. Uh, and in here, we don't have a PA system, but it's closed in enough, hopefully, to where you will be able to hear me. So, uh, Sister Tammy says I can't hear. Now it sounds better. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. All right. So, uh, you all, please keep us, uh, let us know if, if we have any issues going in and out. And uh, that might be something that we want to look into later on, putting in uh, some smaller uh, speakers and, and, and system in here so that we can, we can make sure we have good sound and quality and stuff like that. But, uh, where was I at? Somebody help me. Yeah, so uh, God made one woman for Adam. But then we see uh, from Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Jacob becoming Israel. Israel has multiple wives. Right? Mm -hmm. And then David just takes it to the next level. Solomon takes it to the next level. Quadrant me. You know, <laughs> from one wife to four or five wives to 600 wives, plus a bunch of extra uh, side chicks, girlfriends. That wasn't God's way. But God still allowed it. Even when David messed up, and Nathan came and spoke to him. God told him, I allowed you, mm -hmm. even though that wasn't the plan. Mm -hmm. You had as many wives as you wanted to. Why would you go and take the one wife of a one man yeah. because of greed? Yes, ma'am. So why do they make it like, um, like to be with one woman and a woman be with one man? Why do they make it like that? She's not natural. Why do they make it like it's not natural? Because our nature is to sin. You talk about what's natural. The Bible says we were born in sin, shaped in iniquity. Our nature is to do the opposite of what God tells us. And if God tells us one wife, we want two, three, four, and above. If God, nobody ever had to teach you to lie. True. Boy, did you eat that cookie? <laughs> you have to teach them to tell the truth. Right. But you never have to teach an individual how to lie. Mm -hmm. You don't have to teach an individual how to sin. Right. It comes natural. natural. So when we, talk, when we talk about natural things and what's normal, or we ask the question once in the sermon, are you willing to do the unnatural? Which is to deny self. And that's why Christianity or any most often organized religion, regardless of what that religion is, whether it's Christianity, whether it's Buddhism, uh, Islam, it, it's, it's a form of denying yourself for a higher power. Mm -hmm. So when the monks are, are, are not eating and meditating, that's not natural. For them to go three or four days in a sitting position, and I don't even know if they're allowed to go to the bathroom during those three or four days where, I mean, it's just them in a meditative state, three or four days, no eating, no drinking, no nothing. That is to deny self for the purpose of that higher power. Christianity is the religion, not a religion. There is only one way to the Father, and that is through the Son. The only one way that you can go to the, the Son is if you are drawn by the Father. Mm -hmm. Jesus says, I am the way, not a way. Mm -hmm. So we have to understand that language is important. Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes to us and our bodies and whether or not we are being successful, I want to go through uh, some of these scriptures that's going to help us Go into this study, if you will. Yeah. Go to Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. I'll read it, even though most of us have already heard it. 
I just want, I, I want us to discuss these. Chapter. Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. And it says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Now, how many of us believe that? That is the word of God. We, we, we saw it, right? This is, we read it. We know this is not my word, your word. This is God's word. This is Jesus Christ, right? If you believe it, I want uh, somebody to get a ladder and get on top of the roof. And I want to video you. And I want you to pray to God to be able to fly. Because you can do all things. All things, right? Not some things, all things. I can do all things. Uh -huh. Hey, where y'all at? Ain't nobody uh -huh. amen to me right now. No, uh -huh. uh, no volunteers? We go past that. The scripture really denies us of doing such. For it said that God cannot be tempted with evil. You didn't have to go all PhD on me and say You're going to get there. Thank you, Bishop. So, when Jesus was, was, was in the wilderness and Satan says, hey, he took him up to a high place and told Jesus to jump off. Because remember, the scripture says that the angels will take charge and you won't even dash your foot against the stone. We have to understand, yes, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, but understand, I can do all things that God has purposed for me in his will. So there are a lot of people who are quoting scriptures but don't have an understanding. Amen. So whatever God has purposed you to do, some people God has purposed to play professional football, baseball, soccer, uh, uh, Hollywood. Everybody is not meant to be in the MLB or the NFL or the MLS, or Hollywood, or uh, entertaining. Everybody wasn't meant. So, do you have the capacity? Sure you do. Of course. Spud Webb was a little short, you know, a short according to basketball standards. No, he's actually short. He's a short guy. <laughs> <laughs> but he had unusual ups. This guy could 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 go up and he was dunking like it was nobody's business. That's true. So it your ability to be in the NBA is not necessarily when I say necessarily that there are little people. Uh, and I've never I've never seen a little person in the NBA. Now that might be something we want to look at tomorrow. Uh, having a little read. <laughs> what? I'm not being funny. I, I, I'm not. I think all the little people in here uh, looking to be funny. Anyway. I can do all things. Let's, let's, let's get back. I can do all things, but I have to do those things that God has purpose for me to do. So everybody was not meant to be a general or everybody was not meant to be a whatever. John the Baptist was created for a particular purpose. I'm not sure, and, and this was a conversation that my family and I had the other day. Um, and, and how we got there, it says Jesus was 33 years old when he died physically. But he lived a complete life. Mm -hmm. The Bible says well, that we were given three score and ten. Mm -hmm. Seventy years. Mm -hmm. But if you don't live seventy years, that don't mean that you were cursed by God. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. Because if that was true, then that means that Jesus was a curse. Mm -hmm. Or that John the Baptist was a curse. Or Stephen, who was stoned, was a curse. And we 
know that Stephen was a young man, uh, all of these different things lets us know that you don't have to be 70, but this is, this is a standard proverbial promise that God made to us. Right? Are, are we in agreement? Yes. yes. So, how do you know then that your life is successful if you don't live to be 70? For instance, I don't know how, how old Paul was, but at the end of Paul's life, he says, I have completed my race. I finished my course. I've done what God has told me to do through Christ Jesus. Jesus says, now my time is up. It's, it's time for me to go. It's time for me to make my departure. John the Baptist had a particular job, and that was to pave the way for Jesus Christ. So I know that John the Baptist wasn't over 33. Is that right? Oh, he, he wasn't 33. And he was no less than 30. Jesus started his ministry at 30. John the Baptist ushers the way in for Jesus to start. So John died somewhere, we know, between 30 and 33. But even with that, here it is again, he was a success. He, he did, and Jesus makes the statement that of all the men to who have ever been born, there has been none greater than John the Baptist. So, in, in looking at that now, let's go to Proverbs chapter 16. Proverbs chapter 16, we're going to read verse 1 through 3. And I'm going to read that from the Amplified Version. Proverbs 16, 1 through 3, reading from the Amplified says, The plans and reflections of the heart belong to man, but the wise answer of the tongue is from the Lord. All the ways of a man are clean and innocent in his own eyes. And he may see nothing wrong with his actions, but the Lord weighs and examines the motives and intents of the heart and knows the truth. Commit your works to the Lord, submit and trust them to him, and your plans will succeed if you respond to his will and guidance. Now, why is this... Uh, necessary or important. Why? The plans and reflections of the heart belong to man. We all have plans. You want to? We all have plans. But how many have ever heard the, uh, the old saying that God laughs at our plans? Anybody ever heard that, that statement? It's, 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 it's an old, if you will, proverbial, not Bible proverbs, but it's an old proverbial saying that God laughs at our plans. The idea is we say what we want to do. But most of us, because in the world we know, in the world the majority of the people in the world are not Christians. The Bible says that the, the life that leads to Jesus Christ is narrow and you'll find few people, but the life that leads to destruction is wide and you find many on it. So we know that there are more sinners than there are Christians, right? Mm -hmm. yes. The majority of the people are making plans and they are not asking God, is, is the plans that I'm making the plans that you made for me? Most of us, and that's why we get in trouble, we'll make our own plans, and then when things go wrong, then we ask God to deliver us from them. Well, why? Why me? We, we, buy, we buy a house that's, that's, that's too much, or we buy a car that's too expensive, or we get a man that, that, that takes everything from us, or a woman that steals our joy, or, and then we come back later and say, Lord, help me. If you had done what God had told you to do, then... Uh, even though he says, take my yoke and learn of me, my yoke is easy, my burdens are light. 
The burdens that we would get from following God is not the same burdens that we get when we do our own thing. So, the plans and reflections of the heart is man, but the wise answer of the tongue is from the Lord. God answers us based on what our questions are. And if we listen to God and what he's saying to us and do what he tells us, we will be in a much better position. Understood? We, we, are we okay with that? All the ways of a man are clean and innocent in his own eyes. Most of us think, well, hey, I'm not hurting nobody. How many times have somebody, especially, uh, anybody ever watch those shows about the interventions and the people who are doing drugs and alcohol and all of that, and they don't say, listen, this is my life, my body, I'm not hurting nobody. But they are. In their own eyes, to them, I'm not hurting anybody. But when you are a part of a body, and a lot of times those interventions come with family and the family will tell them, you don't understand how your destruction hurts me. You are a part of me. A mother is pleading to her daughter or pleading to her son or a, a wife is pleading to her husband or vice versa that you are hurting us. The kids need you. They need their father. They need their mother. Uh, uh, they need their brother, their sister, whatever. You are part of this family and your destructive attitude and behavior is hurting us. You all get what I'm saying? Amen. So here they're saying the ways of man are clean and innocent in his own eyes. And he may see nothing wrong with his actions, but the Lord weighs and examines the motives and intent. So God knows what your actual intentions are. No. Now, y'all got to be careful when y'all arguing with y'all husband, y'all wives, y'all brothers and sisters. And I know what you meant to do this. No, you don't know. Because nobody knows the heart except God. And unless God gives you that insight, and, and please don't start now, well, God gave me insight. I know that he, he told me that you know. <laughs> Be real careful in that one. Uh, but I, I want to go to go to Proverbs chapter 19 verse 21. Proverbs 19 and 21. Let me know uh, when most of us are there. Proverbs 19 and 21 says many are the plans in a person's heart. But it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. Regardless to what you plan, your plan will not succeed over God's plan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Brothers and sisters, I, my plan was to join the military, to retire. Uh, this is what I wanted to do. These are all the things that I had set. And God allowed me to do some of those. But then he said, okay, I gave you the opportunity to do some of the things that you wanted to do, but now it's time for you to do what I want to do. Mm -hmm. And I bucked against all of it. I tried my best not to. I, God, you want me to preach? How about I just play? I'll be in the band. I'll be with the choir. <laughs> I, I, I'll come to church. I'll do everything. I'll support the preacher. But that wasn't what God was planning for me. And we cannot compromise with God. God is not about compromising. It's his way or no way. His way or the highway. Or his way or the low way. His way or the death way. When you decide that you are not going to do what God has called you to do, God says... If you are not purposeful, you all remember we were talking about uh, a few weeks ago, a couple of weeks ago, the soil. How good is your soil? And, and we talked about the tree and the tree uh, wasn't bearing any fruit. And God says, if it's not going to bear any fruit, then what good is the tree? Cut it down, use it for firewood. That's all it's good for. Y'all remember that? That was the analogy of the individual, the Christians that are not fruitful. Your job is to make fruit. When I say make fruit, 
You are to duplicate yourselves in the Christian sense. God says be fruitful and multiply. Bring in more sinners to become more Christians. Or bring in Christians to become better Christians. Produce fruit. So we remember that they were talking about the tree. He said even though the tree was, was being fruitful, he pruned it so that it would be more fruitful. Y'all remember that? Yeah. Okay, so... Proverbs chapter 20, verse 24. Amen. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 24 says, A man's steps are ordered by the Lord, or a person's steps are directed by the Lord. How then can anyone understand their own way? How do you think, you know, when you say, well, I'm going to figure out what I want to do in life. <laughs> How can you figure out what you want to do when you didn't create yourself? Most of us are trying to find, you know, when we say, I'm trying to find my own way. But your way ain't your way. It was never your way to begin with. Remember God created you for a purpose. And what he's waiting on you to do is have a relationship with him where he can download your purpose to you. My son uh, started doing phones when he was with T-Mobile. Sometimes the phones will start to act up or, or better yet, when you first bought a phone, you take it in and they program it. They hook it up. They download all the programs. If you have an old phone, they take your old phone to your new phone, connect it, mm -hmm. transfer over all of your apps, transfer over your contact list. They download into your new phone so that it will have what you need on it to be able to work. Now, for instance, the phone right now that we are using in order to uh, do the live stream that phone is just a blank phone. There's no programs on it. There's no service. But because it has Wi-Fi capabilities, we are able to program our own system through the Wi-Fi. But if I take this phone and go halfway down the block, I'm going to lose the signal. It won't have any purpose because there is no plan for it. Plan. You all understand? When somebody asked you, Lord, <laughs> I don't want to say no names. This lady called me over to her house and said, "Can you help me?" I said, "Sure." She said, "My, my phone. I can't. I can't get on Facebook on my phone." Okay. So I'm trying to go through and, and, and pull it up. And what I was able to do was I tapped into her home's Wi-Fi and went on there. And I said, "Well." You know, here we can go on, we can log in, and we can do this and do that. Um, I said, what is your data plan? She said, what? Your, your data, you know, internet, data, data, data plan? What is that? That's what she said. What's that? Right. <laughs> I said, how do you get on the internet on your phone? I don't. I just use it to make calls. I said, well, ain't nothing wrong with your phone. There's something wrong with your plan. You just have a call and plan. I'm sitting over here for an hour trying to figure out why your phone ain't because you don't have the proper plan. I said, you can either go to T-Mobile or whatever and, and they will uh, you know, put a new chip or what in and give you a better plan, I said, most often you can just call. And your phone is already ready. It just has to be downloaded and it has to uh, get the signal to be able to use it. How can you understand your way if you are not connected? If, if you don't have, and this is now where we go back to what Mother Adams was saying in the beginning. Yes, you can read the word. But how many people have read the Bible 
I still don't understand it. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Get an understanding, but not yours. Get God's understanding. But how many of us know that it's hard for, it's not hard, it is impossible for us to comprehend God's understanding because our ways are not his ways, our thoughts are not his thoughts, they are as far as the heavens are from the earth. God's interpretation and your interpretation, how many of us can truly understand the Trinity? Mm -mm. The Trinity. Mm -mm. You try to like, honestly... The best way I can describe it is three entities, but they all have one head, one mind. Like they all think in sync. So there is no disagreement. They were always here. I, 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 I didn't actually explain it. Oh, yeah. explain it. No, no. I, I really said, how many of us yeah. truly yeah. understand? No, you really can't. You can't. You really can't. You can't. It, you can't. There is no way that we can mentally comprehend someone being who was never born. Right, who's always just here. Right. That you, from the beginning, before the beginning, you were there. Yeah. And then y'all were there. Right. But you were the head. But they all were there still. Yeah. From the be yeah. No, y'all, I'm confusing myself. <laughs> and now, yes, ma'am. That's, that's one of the most problems in with the world today. A lot of people will tell you they know the Lord. I've talked to the Lord. I pray every day. But how can you pray to someone who you know nothing about? If you are not in God's word, have accepted God as your Savior, then you don't really have that connection. You just know of God. You've heard what you've heard people say and what you've heard people talk about. Like what you just said about the lady with the dad. If, you, if there is no connection, no understanding, there is no way that you can be in Christ because you say, I pray. I I know the man upstairs, but yet you don't know God. You don't know him. If you don't know him in his word. Yes, sir. Can you receive the word from God outside of the Bible? Yes. Because I, I, a lot of times, like you said, a lot of people will hear it and won't necessarily understand it. But then outside things will show you more of a, you know, like a, a direction more than. If you understand what I'm saying. Yes. So I want to make sure that if there's anybody watching that they can hear the question. The question was, can you hear from God outside of the Bible? Yes, you can. And, and most people initially hear from God outside of the Bible. Mm -hmm. There is a drawing. Uh, there is a tugging on your heart uh, to want something. Than more. And it draws you to church and through church, if the church is doing what they are supposed to do, the church is going to increase your appetite for the word so that you will begin to read and study the word for yourself. Now, you can have that initial, but the initial shouldn't be the end. So you can have that initial word from God directly, God speaking directly to you. But what God is going to do in order for you to get to know him on a betterment, he's going to direct you to the word. So you have those people then who say, I don't need to go to church because I read the word for myself. Well, now we have to go back to will the word confirm? You know, I can have more than one wife. I can be a gigolo. What does the word say? Can you read the word for yourself? Yes, you can. Will you understand everything that you read? No, you will not. How do I know this? Uh, go to, for, for, for the individual. Now, okay, put a pen right there. Very quickly. We were talking about praying and the people who say, I pray to God and uh, I don't, you know, uh, I don't need to go to church. I pray to God and me and God have a relationship and all of that. Go to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8 verse 27. Somebody please don't let me forget that uh, we were just talking. What were we talking about? <laughs> don't let me forget what I already forgot. Uh, it's recorded. 
<laughs> so, I'm asking right now the Holy Spirit to bring back to my remembrance what we were just talking about and where we were getting ready to go. We were, we were, we were going to go to uh, Romans. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We were going to go to Romans to go to how can they hear without a preacher and all of that. Okay? Uh, Romans 8 and 27. <clears throat> Reading from the NIV, it says... And he who searches our hearts know the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. The individual who is telling you that they can pray to God and they don't have to go to church and, 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 and most of them are saying that have not truly accepted Christ. It's hard for you to be a Christian and be away from church. Amen. The same way it's hard for you to say you love your wife and, or your husband and stay away from them. You cannot, you, you can't go home once every three or four months after being married and knock on the door because more than likely you're going to have to knock because your key ain't going to work after that long of a time. <laughs> you knock on the door and your husband, your wife come to the door and uh, you go, hey baby, they go, baby. <laughs> Dude, I'm already contacted the lawyer right now. It's just on paper. <laughs> but but we're gonna handle this. Well, what's the problem? What do you mean? What's the problem? <laughs> you ain't seen me. You haven't called me calling every week. You ain't been home in in four months. No, we don't have a relationship. How many people come to church on Christmas, Mother's Day, and Easter talking about I'm a Christian? <laughs> God says I'm married to you. But you won't come to see me? Oh, no. What kind of? No. That ain't happening. Yes, sir. Oh, no, no, no. It was reconnected. Huh? It was just reconnected. Oh, okay. Oh, did it? Hopefully it didn't cut out. Why you good? Okay, so now, let's go to Romans chapter 8. Or is it 10? 8. 8. 27. Now we, we just read we just read Romans eight and twenty seven, but I, I think where we were trying to go to was uh, Romans chapter ten, and that's where we get salvation at. So. Yes. So uh, it's, I hear this a lot. Uh, I hate to church with no God. I have heard that, and I understand. I understand what they're saying because remember that it was the church that killed Christ. It was religion and religious people. And most often the church now is full of religious people, but not full of God's people. It's church who turns people away. A man will come into church with a hat on, and back in the day the mothers or, or the, the deacons or the older generation would say, you can't come into church with a hat on. My question is, do you think God is more concerned about his heart or his hat? That a lot of people will, will say we're doing something in, in Jesus' name. The Klan, the Ku Klux Klan said they were killing black people in the name of Jesus. They were doing God a favor like God didn't create us. And, and their job was to eradicate black people. The Southern Baptists years ago and even to some extent even today put division in the church. So black people who grew up in the South, who were part of those churches where all they read was slaves obey your master, then I can see why certain people would say, I love God, but hate the church. Mm -hmm. But are they really then the church or is it a building with a cross on it where people go to? There's a difference between the building and the church. 
Jesus says, upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And then he asked about the kingdom of God, and he said, understand that the kingdom is in you. So we are the church. But we always have to remember that we ain't even a good church either. So while we're hating on other people talking about how bad they are, we have to look at how bad we are. So does that make sense? So the thing is though, some, some people say the only Bible that somebody will read could be you. Right, right. So how when they when they say the church and they look at you, are they seeing a good church or a bad church? Right, right, amen. What you was you was you gonna ask the question? Yeah, so is it reasonable? So it's acceptable for like people to not go to church again, and the church is so like uh, judgmental. No, it's just the, the bottom line is no, it's not acceptable. Right. Um, because snooks, deer birds, uh, oh, no, no, uh, snooks and deer birds are, are very more of the high priced grocery stores that we have. Whole Foods, where everything in there is organic, is very high priced. But that don't mean I'm not going to eat. Mm -hmm. If I have to go to Save a Lot, or if I have to go to Aldi's, or if I have to go to a food pantry, I'm going to eat. Right, right. Different areas have different uh, different stores. When you know, if, if you go to the South. The, the East, you can get a Piggly Wiggly. Uh, you can get a Publix. Uh, consumers. All different stores are different priced wherever you go. They're going to have the high price and the low price. They, hey, you can go to uh, uh, Ruth Chris Steakhouse or you can go to the Hawaiian Grill and still get a T-Bone Steak. Ruth Chris, you're going to pay Seven hundred dollars for the steak, and the Hawaiian grill you're gonna pay seven dollars, but it's still a steak. You can still get a baked potato uh, and 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 whatever. We're going to eat just because one church or a church you went to is not right or or bad, if you will. Don't say I'm not going to a church because that church is bad. Find a good one. Find one that that speaks to you. That speaks to you. Right. Right. Because. Again, I say, Jerusalem don't speak to everybody. There are some churches that are, are very well established, very traditional, uh, and, and there's, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with those churches. But that's how that individual grew up. That's how they feel. Uh, uh, it speaks more to their spirit, and that is great. Go there. You don't have to say, well, since... Jerusalem don't shout every Sunday. Mm -hmm. People are not speaking in tongues every Sunday. Uh, I don't see a whole lot of laying on hands and, and people being healed and delivered and, and whatever. So the Spirit of God must not be there. I hate church. Wait a minute. There are other churches where they speak in tongues on, on an every Sunday basis. Where they shout every Sunday. Where they do whatever every Sunday. There are... You can go where you are comfortable. Right. The Bible says, forsake not the assembly of yourselves together. There are, I was with a group of pastors, 20 some odd pastors, uh, a couple of weeks ago. And the comments some that were making was, uh, since COVID, people have stopped going to church. Some, there are some churches that are still not open. You all, we are, we are coming out of the place where uh, we were talking about pandemic. We are post-pandemic times right now. Is COVID still happening? Yes. Uh, a, a friend of mine who we normally meet with on, on Thursday mornings, he, he called us last Wednesday and said, I won't be able to make it. I got COVID. And we was like, okay, cool, dude. 
Now y'all remember three years ago when somebody said they had COVID? Ooh. You started crying. You know, uh, what do you want sung at your service? How would you like to be dressed? Do you already have a suit picked out? Do y'all got a burial plan? Now you got COVID, it's like, okay, you know, you want some chicken noodle soup? I'll be by. I'll swing by, you know. You got some Lysol. Everybody got Lysol. Now, y'all remember you couldn't get Lysol? Couldn't get no yeah. It was $40 for a bottle. Or in order to get tissue, you had to rob somebody. <laughs> but anyway, the preachers that I was talking to, I told y'all I'd run down them rabbit holes. Uh, the preacher that I was talking or the preachers, they were talking about people not coming to church. And now in the, uh, the arena where you can have church online, that now when people move and leave, and they no longer have to leave your church. And I, I'm thinking, so if the Bible says forsake not the assembly, brothers and sisters, this is not assembling yourselves. See, that's man's way. This, that's right. And, and you can take this and, and put it on the big screen. That's right. still not assembling that's yourselves. Right. And right. even if they can put you on the screen mm -hmm. and, and, and put you, per se, into the service, that ain't it. There's a way that seems right. Now, I'm talking to... So that's not church. Huh? That's not the way of God. Okay. It, it is a form of church. But no, that's not church. If God gives us a commandment, and, and his commandment, okay, let's go to the commandment so that we don't misunderstand what I'm saying and, and what he commands. Uh, Hebrews, uh, Hebrews chapter 10. Okay, so. That's right. now, now wait a minute. Don't get me wrong, because there are many people who come to church and go to sleep, and then there are folks who uh, who, who who watch service online and they are very attentive. <laughs> Listen to this. I don't watch our live stream. I don't go back and review it and take notes and critique myself. I don't like doing that. But there are other ministers and preachers and churches that I do watch. And I'm watching the preaching. I don't, I don't normally watch the whole service. I watch the preaching because that every preacher needs a preacher. Every pastor still needs to hear the word. And I can tell you how many times I've read the scriptures and it's it's great, and, and I get normally what I got from it the last time I read it, but when I hear another preacher preach it, it opens up a whole new world for me. Yes. Most of my sermons come from listening to other preachers, and they'll have a 40-minute sermon, but they'll say one phrase, and God will speak to me on that one phrase and give me a whole sermon from one phrase. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. I, I can go after it. No, go ahead. Trying to figure it out in my mind, but I, I keep on ask. So you said it earlier, but you were talking about everybody, like every person is married to God. How exactly does that work as far as men and women being married to God? Because I don't know how to break down, so I don't understand. It. So the Bible says that question was, Pastor. What was her question? Oh, the question was. I made the statement earlier that we are all married to God. Man and woman. Mm -hmm. So remember that when God created us, he created us male and female. But the Bible says that God is neither male nor female. He is a spirit and they that worship must worship him in spirit and in truth. But if God is married to the church, he says Jesus Christ is coming back after his bride. We have been reconciled to God. Through Jesus Christ. So, some years ago, my wife and I were having some major issues and we were talking about getting a divorce and all of that. And I said, you're a bad wife. And I went to God and I told God, God, she's a bad wife and I want you to get rid of her. Real talk. True story. God told me, you're a bad wife. I said, excuse me? Who are you? 
you talking to? Bro. <laughs> I'm a dude. I ain't nobody's wife. He says, now I'm preaching. I'm, I'm a preacher during this time. I have accepted my calling. I'm in the pool pit. I'm God's man. I told God, you got me all messed up. Ain't nothing funny here. God says, okay, let's 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 do the math. I'm I'm married to the backslider, right? Yes, Lord, you are. He said, and I said that I'm coming back after my church, right? Yes. He said, and my church is the bride, right? Yes. He said, are you the church? Wait a minute, that's a trick question. <laughs> yes, God, I am the church, you know. He says, well, if I'm married to the church and the church is the bride and you're the bride, who do you think that I am to you in this relationship? Okay, so God is the husband man. I'm the bride. Understanding my role as far as the family is concerned, who is submissive to who? Is the bride submissive to the husband or is the husband submissive to the bride? Yes, we do understand that uh, in, in Ephesians chapter 5, God says, submit yourselves one to the other. But he says, wives, submit yourselves to your husband. In 1 Peter it says, the husband is the head of the wife. In Ephesians it says, the husband is the head of the wife like Christ is the head of the church and he is the savior of the body. So we have to understand then that for God to be married to us, God as a whole is married to us individually and collectively. So God is all of our heads. You all remember when we used to, uh, when we were taught how to give a welcome when we were growing up? Giving honor to God, who is the head of my life, to the pastors, members, and friends. Y'all remember? God is the head of all of us. So God is the husband to all of us. When the Bible talks about uh, the bridegroom was coming and there was the virgins who, who didn't have enough oil and, and there's a whole lot of other stories that we could show to correlate how God is the head and God is the husband and we, male and female, only in this sense. Please don't try to take this out of context. Please don't try to make a man and, 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 into a wife for another man. That is not what this is about. Amen. But does that does that make more sense? It makes more sense because I, I never understood. That's because I when you, when you first said I was like, wait a minute, how exactly does that work? Because no one's ever explained it. They kind of just leave it there. No one really ever breaks it down. So it did make it easier to understand. You pretty much saying that, like you said, we as a church and individuals, we're married to him. He's not a man or a woman. But God the Spirit is masculine, mm -hmm. which is why in the scripture it refers to him as he. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people who say God is a woman. Mm -hmm. That is incorrect. Now that, that doesn't make a woman any less, that does not take away from her, it just says God is masculine. Yes, ma'am. That's why Pastor Ken is so important. That we study, that we have Bible study, we have Sunday school. See, there are questions like these when people hear things and read things that need to be explained. That's why I used to tell people go to uh, your BTU, which is a Bible train, uh, not this training unit, so that you can be trained to the Word of God. And that's why it's so important, like you just said, I don't take this out of context. Whoever could be listening to what's being said here to understand and listen. You have to accept God for what he says. That's why the minister said earlier about faith. You have to have faith in God's word. I can't sit and explain to you like I said the Trinity. I can't explain to you how God is a spirit. What I can tell you is what God says and that's what I believe. Now after me studying, God gives me revelation. But still everything cannot be explained. Again, this is why it is so important that we have these classes, which is Bible study. And Sunday school. Those are important for us because that's our learning opportunity. 
to ask those questions. When you're up in the pulpit and something comes across, we can't ask it. That's why it's good to have our Bible, our pen, and our paper to take notes that later on when we have these sessions now, we can bring up just like the young lady brought up. Listen, right now, uh, it, 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 it is the time and the opportunity for us uh, to express in giving. If you're watching and you want to give, you can give using the Zelle app for those who are using Zelle. And that is uh, the phone number 314-368-7378. If you want to give via the cash app, it is dollar sign, New Jerusalem, 1977. And then there are those who are still using the regular mail, and you can submit your offering through the mail at number one, North Dade, Ferguson, Missouri, 63135. Is there a question? Is, is, is there a question somewhere? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Um, yes. So I wanted to um, go off of what Brother Lashon was saying, because a lot of people, uh, you know, need to know. For the simple fact that I was one of those people who felt that, you know, uh, it was unnecessary to go to church. You know, when you have all these other churches on the TV, online, and uh, it wasn't until when I was hospitalized and near death that um, it, it, I want to say the Holy Spirit opened up my understanding with that. And this is what I share with a lot of people when they ask the question. You know, is it necessary to go to church? Uh, or can we get church online and watch and still have the same effect? No, you cannot have the same effect. When I came to church, and this is how the Holy Spirit showed me, when I came to church depressed uh, because of the symptoms of the, the, the situation that I'm constantly facing, it was something about being in the sanctuary and having other people who were encouraging me, uplifting me, hugging me in, in the presence that made me feel a whole lot better than what I could actually feel sitting in the hospital bed watching it on you know, YouTube, mm -hmm. online, or whatever. Uh, can you watch it? Absolutely. I, 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 I do a lot of times encourage myself by watching online when we're not in church on Sunday, when we're not in church on Tuesday. So for the rest of the days, I'll just increase my faith with what I'm hearing. But it's still for me important to be amongst other believers. Okay. Two things, and, and we only have five minutes left, so I'm going to try to do this very quickly. Anybody heard about Beyonce coming to St. Louis? Uh, those tickets, I was told, was like, some of them, $1,000? $2,000? Uh, why? Why would anybody spend $1,000 or $2,000 on a ticket? Because, if I'm not mistaken, uh, uh, where, where, where is, where is the remote control? Somebody get the remote control, turn the TV on, go to YouTube, and see if we can pull up a... Uh, I suggested that. I uh, a, a Beyonce. <laughs> look, up, look up Beyonce uh, uh, concert. Is that the Ashes worth a thousand? Huh? Is it bad she's worth a thousand? No. Is it bad that she's worth a thousand? That depends on the person who's buying the ticket. <laughs> Some people, I have a, a suburban. The suburban, the Tahoe, the Yukon, the Cadillac, same truck, different names. Why would you buy a Cadillac if you could buy a Tahoe? Because it comes with different options. And it also has a, a turn it down, please. It also has a different name. The name gives a status. Some, hey, I was watching the lottery change my life the other day. Man won the lottery, he gets a thousand dollars a day for the rest of his life. A thousand dollars a day. That means in the average month, he makes 30 grand. 
If he wants to, to go and see a, a, a concert, it just cost him two days of his life. But there are some people who make $1,000 or, or $2,000 a month. They just had to spend 30 days of their life to go to a Beyonce concert. If they have that kind of money, and that's what they want to do, and it doesn't hurt them financially, that's on them. Or tell somebody else to make it foolish. Brothers and sisters, for some of us to go out to eat and spend $20, it's ridiculous. It don't make sense because it's, it's 20 bucks that we don't have. But some of us look at $20 like some people look at $2,000. But I can watch. I can watch the full show. The, 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 the full Beyonce I Am Yours, which is an hour and 38 minutes and 25 seconds, and I don't have to spend nothing. <laughs> huh? No, it's not stealing. It's, it's, it's on here. She got, I mean. It's on YouTube. It's on YouTube. It's, it's, it's not an illegal download or whatever, but my point is the people that went to that the concert, people who want to go to the concert, there's a feeling that they there, there is something about being in the presence. Now, the, the part that I need to end on is we just said trust in the Lord, don't lean to your own understanding, acknowledge God in all your ways. Mm -hmm. What is sin? What is the definition of sin? The definition of sin is disobedience to God. Mm -hmm. So when God says do something and you don't do it, the Bible says to them that becomes sin. Yeah. Let's read Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25. Now I'm going to read this from the, uh, the Amplified so that we make sure we get a complete understanding. Not forsaking or neglecting to assemble together as believers. And is the habit of some people, but admonishing, warning, urging, and encouraging one another, and all the more faithfully as you see the day approaching. If God says, I want you to come together and do not forsake coming together, when you choose to forsake coming together, you yes. are sinning. Yes. So it's not a matter of what do I think. Do I think that we should go to church or do I think you should not go to church? My opinion is worthless. Right. God's opinion is yeah. everything. Yes. So can I yes. hey, there are some people who can watch TV and shout in their house. Mm. You can feel the spirit. First of all, if you can't feel the spirit of God in your house, you shouldn't be able to feel it nowhere. Mm. If you can get happy in your car. I done seen people get out of their car and start shouting in the street. When I got the phone call about my first job when I came out of the service and they told me I landed the job, I was outside of my house. I started shouting in the front yard. I was happy. I had been without a job and they said here's a $60,000 a year job and I'm like, Lord, thank you finally. I can pay some bills. I can get out of debt. I can save my home. Blah, blah, blah. I was happy. But I still had to go to church. It don't make no, it don't make no difference, brothers and sisters, what you think. That's right. God's word is what it's, it's not obedience. I have to make sure, which is why I have a problem with all of the, the preachers who are saying, if, if you leave and go somewhere, you can still be a member of Jerusalem. You can be a member of Jerusalem until you find you a local church. Brothers and sisters, I have people who I love and who love me, who, who, who watch our services. There are people in Thailand and, and other states and all of that who watch us on a consistent basis. But I tell them, find you a local church. Because I can't tell them it's okay to, to have Jerusalem as their local church. And I'm preaching this to you. That's a hypocrite. That's wrong. Yes, sir. Final final thoughts or questions? If I was uh, out or just out of town on work or something like that, and I was watching on there for paying tithes to here, you consider my church, right? Yes. Now, keep in mind, you said if I'm out of town. So, for instance, yeah, I was in the military for 17 years. I gave offerings to whatever church I was attending, but my tithes always came home. Now, there are a lot of times, and my wife
wife is right here to testify. There were times that my offering was more than my tithes. So when I was somewhere, I was giving to the church and supporting the preacher. But my tithes always came home because I never left my membership. I would join under watch care in the military, depending on where I was stationed at, but my membership was always home. Now, if I decided that I wouldn't in the military and I'm just going to move away, then I need to find me a church home wherever I move away to. So when that's the difference between military and traveling and not being at home because my home of record, anytime they pulled up my, my military record, my home of record was St. Louis, Missouri. So I, I was never a resident of Florida, Illinois, Rhode Island, uh, Tennessee. I was always a resident of Missouri, but my military travels allowed me to be in other states. So there are always uh, opportunities. And there are people who still, who watch this service, and I've told them, mm -hmm. go and find you a local church. They still found them a church in the city that they're in, and they still give. Some people are, are, are financially well enough to where they said, Pastor, I'm going to give tithes here and tithe there. So I'm tithing 20% because I believe in the ministry that you're doing. But I still tell them, make sure you pay your tithes to your local church. I'm not going to stop you or tell you that you can't give an offer here, but your tithe. Because I cannot lie so that it benefits us. Amen. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Brothers and sisters, we are four minutes over, but it was a good four minutes. Uh, come next week, if the Lord allow, we'll, we'll be back here. Uh, uh, I will let you all know on, uh, on Sunday. Sunday is the church's anniversary, but that Tuesday... Uh, it, it, it just kind of depends. We're going to play that by ear, but I will let you all know on Sunday whether or not we will be having service on Tuesday or not. Got it? Yeah. All right. Love you all. God bless you. Uh, we'll see you on Sunday.